Come on. Get them shot. The Nilfgaardian invasion necessitated certain steps. Neve had dispatched scrolls to her garrison commanders, based upon which they were to announce general musters. She'd hoped that by the time she reached Crydam, fresh recruits would be waiting to join her growing force. Alas, the commander of this fort, one Sergeant Griggs, had only bad news. Your Majesty, I've not the numbers to man the walls even. The call to arms brings few new recruits and more men desert each day. Folk are terrified something awful. They don't believe in victory. Since love of country seems insufficient motivation, Meave said, standing up from behind the table, we must make coins speak. Sergeant, announce that all new recruits will receive twice the usual soldier's pay. Though costly, Meave's decision brought immediate results. Lured by the promise of gold, townsfolk in droves enlisted with the garrison. The Queen left Crydam poorer, but encouraged as she had a stronger force in tow. <sighs> Nothing stirs a soldier's soul quite like coin. The clinkety clink of gold. A contract on a monster. Interesting. Dragon! A live one! See it on the other eyes! A dragon! A live one! Seen it with my own eyes! Had winged like a bat and a mess of teeth! wrong at Abbot's Ravine. I heard whinnies and screams at first. How all's gone silent. Why ever do the gods punish us so? To be cast out by Nilfgaard. On their way to the capital, Meave and company happened one fine day upon a lone rider. Had I been at her side, I would immediately have recognized his passionate gaze and altogether chivalrous mien. Identify yourself, sir, and your intent. Ache of Dinell, I am dubbed, and my design I never conceal. The good book says the world is a garden which the gods once conferred upon man, and we men have this garden neglected. In consequence, all manner of filth has made its lair here. Drowners, ghouls, and other kobolds. I have sworn ne'er to rest until the day when, with the gods' help, I have rid the world of these beasts and pests. I wander all lands, seeking out evil and facing it in mortal combat. Who do we spy? A knight errant? Hmm. 
just as likely a madman. How goes your hunt? Caught the trail of any monster? Monster? Too fair a term by far. An exceptionally vile worm has made its lair in nearby caverns. It is said to be the very distillation of filth. A slither in horror. A melange of the macabre. Its head, that of a wild cat of Ophir. Its maw full of spiked teeth. The wings of a bat it is said to have. The tail of a scorpion, and from it, a thick venom drips. Learned men call this variety a manticore, or mardiacore. Perhaps it will be most prudent, then, to send for a witcher. A witcher? <laughs> Soulless automatons they are, all, feeding on common folk's fears. What they demand gold to do, I perform without demand of any coin. Sir Egg, far be it from me to discourage you. Your endeavor is noble, no doubt, but from what I have heard, Manticores are exceedingly dangerous beasts. To defeat this filth alone could be a difficult task, I'll not deny. Yet try it I must, for it is what I have sworn before the gods. Hmm. We shall help you find and fight the Manticore, provided you then pledge to help us fight an even fiercer and filthier beast. Of course, my lady. Yet what manner of horror is it? A vipper? A griffin? A drake of some rare form? Were it only. Tis a beast of a thousand heads, covered in black armor, its fire consuming whole villages. Noble lady, I know bestia is only in parts, yet I've seen some of the world, and never have I heard of such a terror. You need but look about you, and spot Nilfgaard's legions. Devastating. But you must forgive me, Your Grace. This struggle between realms is not one to which I can lay a hand. A manticore. How great is its appetite? How many men does it fell, in a moon, let us say? It changes. At a time when the horror broods, it may be as many as twenty. I see. As now you must. Nilfgaard, in my capital, could mean as many as 20,000 felled. You live to fight evil, injustice, do you not? You can fight none greater than by doing so at my side. The Manticore, Your Grace, must fall first. As to what happens later, I shall need to consult the good book and petition the gods. Agreed. So be it. This monster. Where lies its lair? Where does it prowl? To the north, my queen. A few leagues on.
better folk moving about of late. They live ye our own land, charming fertile and grand. One of them golden sons belongs on the side of my own ship. make for good prisoners, good slaves too. <laughs> One evening, soldiers brought before Meave the elf she had saved from a lynching. It seemed he had been the fiend who had poisoned the water barrels from which several soldiers had drunk, then suffered and died. Yes, I did it. And I regret it not one bit. See, the elf. Nilfgaardian, Temerian, some brute from Lyria, you Dwan are all alike. I detest you. All of you, your filth for what you wrought with my brethren. I'm proud, I am, that even a few of your kind perished at my hand. Hail and Shay. Meave pursed her lips into a thin white line. Raynard knew the expression. It did not bode well. I should drag you to the capital, hang you high in the market square, Meave said through gritted teeth. Yet this you would want, am I right? For your folk to speak of you? For your folk to remember? Well, you shan't have it. You'll hang here, in the middle of nowhere, with but crows to witness it and then pick at your eyes. It was a summary execution. No sentence was read, no last wish observed. 
The elf's corpse then hung long at the roadside, as none came forth to claim and bury it. We welcome you home, your majesty. Prince Willem awaits your return, your grace. Good you've returned, ma'am. Lyria needs... Home at last, Your Grace. Mm-hmm. We shall not enjoy it long, I fear. Soon we must face the black clads in the field. Yet a moment's peace we will have. After that drubbing you gave them at Dravagrad, they'll wish to rethink their strategy. Is Your Majesty also bound for behind. Not a scrap. Nothing to bury. Blood's all that's left behind. It is in these ravines. The beast is near. I sense it. At the furthest depth of the winding, gloomy canyon, Scouts found the maw of a great cavern. Among the boulders outside it, whitening bones lay strewn. Ake dismounted and drew his blade. By the God's grace, we found the beast's lair, he said, lifting his gaze to the heavens. We need them but to extend their favor as we battle the filth. Meave cast a critical eye at her shield, wood clad in leather and thin plate. Enough to stop a sword, certainly, but would it protect her from a beast's raging blow? Noticing her hesitation, Reynard approached the Queen and said, Your Grace, none will utter a disparaging word should you step back. But they will think them, replied Meave. And that's bad enough. The war has begun. I can't appear weak to my fighting men. Without awaiting an answer, Meave strode into the cave. The rest of the company followed, equally full of fear and faith in their queen and commander. Moments later, a great and powerful roar filled the cavern.
beheld the beast! Profane horns didst adorn his wicked brow! God's protectors. Left. To wear its claws! The hardest plate they shred like fine vellum! This artist will be reaping black clad heads. Faith guides me. Tiny devils, hungry like a wolf I am. A knight should help. Our Codex commands it. Can't take it anymore. Abolista, your command. One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest. We must trust each other.
When I beheld the beast, profane horns did stand up. God's protectors. Left. Beware its claws! Company! Forward march! Again and again and again. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Abolist at your command. Keep that file! I'm a one, sir. Prepare to fight, if you've any honor. Listen to me, old lady. We must thank the gods. With Ake at their side, the Lyrians fell the manticore. Later, it was said, the beast's dying wail, multiplied and strengthened as it passed through the caverns, could be heard as far as Spala. Your Grace, many monarchs have I met in my time, yet none proved as virile in battle as did your Majesty. Virile? I dislike the term. Seems not to suit a woman. I prefer valiant. Yet grateful I am for the compliment. Now pray reveal, have you made your decision? Will you swear to serve me? Are you prepared to take an oath? I am not, Your Grace. I can serve only the gods. Yet, I do believe them to be on your side as one unjustly and treacherously attacked. Thus I see nothing wrong in assisting you. Then I am content and welcome you in my ranks, Sir Ake of Donnell. The Knight Errant bowed low from the waist. So low, in fact, the gambeson neath his mail creaked. Meave could only hope he would battle Nilf Guardians as boldly as he faced beasts. I see you found the mess tent. How's the ale? Not too warm, I hope. Tis not for me to say, Your Majesty. 
My tankard holds but milk of the goat. Milk? A witless prank. I shall tell the quartermaster at once what I think of such... Unnecessary, your grace. I called for the beverage. Is that so? Well then. The good book states clearly. The shadow of spirits obscureth light most true. And leadeth thee from the path of virtue. Right. I suppose there's something to it. My soul sings to hear your affirmation, Your Grace. If ever you wish to discuss the good book and the wisdoms contained therein, hesitate not to find me. Certainly, I shall remember that. <laughs> Your crusade against monsters. Have you been at it long? Come next Bellatane, it will be twenty years, Your Grace. Though, there was one extended interruption. For what reason? Had you grown weary of the Knight Errant's life? Not in the least. Never shall I cease in my quest to cleanse the world of filth and abominations. But at times... At times, evil puts up rather a good fight. I ventured forth to slay a dragon once, a gold one, as it were, calling itself Villa Tretelmeft, or the like. Its very name, as is evident, a vile toil for the tongue and wafting wickedness. A great many mercenaries embarked on the hunt, lured by the promise of coin in heaps. The Crinford Reavers, Yarp and Zigrin, and a band of dwarves, even, curse the word, a witcher, one Yennefer lecherous sorceress at his side. Hmm, that name I've heard. But at the deciding moment, when the beast challenged all, I alone emerged to face it. Alas, oh, shame burns me to admit it. I returned from the battle upon my shield. Figuratively. Literally. I returned in pieces. For two years, I lay in the temple of Melitale in Alanda. Mother Neneke, God's protector, nursing me back to full health. And only when I could once more grip my sword did I return to the path I'd chosen. And the dragon? What was its fate? Some claim it flew off to Zeracania, though it very well might yet lurk here, awaiting the opportune moment to terrorize the folk of the North again. Farewell, Ake. Whole village. Just one big grave now. Hallowed mother. Look upon the stricken souls who have suffered evil. Night on the high road, a day afore last, claim the beasts called a girly cora or some such. Tiny battles, hungry like a wolf I am.
You can try to win them all, but you won't. One bolt. Give me a time. Discipline shall bring us victory! Well? Well? The worm, just as I said. Now who's addled in the head, eh? As Meave and company traversed the ruddy meadows, strident voices reached their ears. I beg your pardon. I've heard enough. A duel. I challenge you to a duel. A duel? Nonsense. 
I'd sooner lay you across my lap and give your arse a thorough flailing, you scoundrel. The Queen approached the arguing parties. Two nobles, Lords Cartwright and Mansfield. Quickly she ascertained they were up in arms over ownership of an orchard lying between their estates. Assisting both nobles, their kinsmen, armed to the teeth, prepared to leap at each other and crush heads. Upon spotting Meave, the lords lowered their voices, bowed and presented themselves. Yet they could not keep their ire fettered long and were soon casting aspersions again. Y your Grace, Mansfield has seized it. No, no, stolen my land. Land that has been in my family for generations. It is my recompense for your reckless deeds. To burn down me mill in Furchin for a bit of sawdust in your flour? Well, I never. A bit? A bit? Oh, let me at him. Farman's taken ill, cook's feverish, all from that manure. You are a fraud, sir. A fraud and a thief. Though she faced the not at all trifling matter of the Nilf Guardian invasion, Meave agreed to settle the dispute. Reynard, who knew the history of every Lyrian and Rivian family seven generations back, served as her advisor. No doubt I would find for the Cartwrights. They are in the right here as regards the title to the land. Yet your grace must consider. The Mansfields have ever served the crown and never delayed payment of tribute. Whereas the Cartwrights... The Cartwrights are litigious charlatans who owe the royal treasury thousands, many thousands. Cartwrights and must remain so. Your Grace! Mansfield started angrily. For years I've loyally served the Crown. I ask that you continue to do so and respect my judgment then. Lord Mansfield turned green, then red, then blue, as he passed from envy through irritation to deep ire. Yet in the end he accepted his ruler's judgment. Lord Cartwright, his joy hardly contained, knew how to show gratitude ordering the best of his men-at-arms to join Meave's force. <laughs> what is it, Mansfield? Hey, whence the frown? Do you not agree with your queen? What is it, Mansfield? Hey, whence the frown? Do you not agree with your queen?
For Rivia! For Maeve! Long live the Criden Brigade! Rumbala, rumbala, rumbala! <sighs> Nothing stirs a soldier's soul quite like going. Clinkety clink of gold. Well? Well? The worm, just as I said. Now who's addled in the head, eh? Astrologers proclaim Week of the Badger. First Blacklads, now Islanders. No telling what others mean to attack us. Dark day for the Emperor! His arm is shredded to ribbons! <laughs> <laughs> 